Uh, we're going from O to down to earth. <laughs> so I want to talk about big things because in a way what interests me is how can we be free? And at what place can we be free? You're going to see throughout my talk, you're going to see a film, which I'm not going to make any reference to. But it's talking about what I'm talking, but in a different way. So where is freedom? And I would say freedom and how can meditation help us with freedom? And I would say freedom is at the point of contact. So meditation helps us to see the point of contact. We come into contact through the senses with things around us and within us. And what do we do? Generally, there is a feeling tone and generally we go very fast. I don't know what you think of my little shirt. <laughs> I'm quite happy with my little shirt. <laughs> but you might say, hmm, how come she's wearing this shirt? A Buddhist meditating teacher should not wear this kind of shirt. She should wear a Chinese shirt. <laughs> or you might think, wow, where did she get it? <laughs> oh, maybe I want one like this. I want one for me. And so, in a way, you see something, what do you do with it? Do you creatively engage with it? Or do you grasp at it? And so first I like to talk about the process of grasping to show the difference, because I'm not saying we should always creatively engage and never grasp. I think grasping is part of being human. But do we grasp 98%? Or do we grasp 50%? This is, has to be, is a question, is a freedom we have. And so, grasping, how does it work? Ah, I lost something. Never mind, I'll use something else. So, let's say this is very precious to me. It's gold or diamond, or it's the greatest truth in the universe. And because it's precious, I hold on to it, like this. And if I do this for any length of time, what happens? Two things happen. The first thing, I get a cramp in the arm. <laughs> and this is a sign of grasping, is tension. And so that's what I want to talk this morning is about signal. How can we be more aware of the signal of how does it feel to be creatively engaged? How does it feel to grasp? And what's the problem with grasping? So that's the first thing, tension. But the second thing which we have with this is that when I grasp at this like that, I cannot use my hand for anything else. So I'm actually stuck to what I'm grasping at. So then what is the solution? First solution, Buddhist, long ago, cut the hand. <laughs> Ascetic practices. Then, I mean, you don't grasp. Personally, I think this is a little drastic. <laughs> Second solution, get rid of the object. And this is something that the advertisement industry has really understood. The process of grasping and how it works. So you see a shop and you think, mm, it's like the thing is saying, come, come, come. You really want me. You have to have me yesterday. You know, the latest iPhone 46 or the latest iPad 25 or whatever it is. Instagram or there is a new one I recently heard about. So, but the thing is, the, the, the thing is not there. The grasping is not in the object. The object just arises upon condition. So the problem is not the object. And so I would say that the meditation process is a process of releasing, of opening our hand. So the object is still there, but we can move it. There is freedom. Because the process of grasping works in this way.
you come into contact, you have the feeling tone. We don't have to talk the time to talk about this, or it's very interesting. You have the feeling tone, and you identify. It's very important to see that it's not moving. <laughs> this is a film. <laughs> we still total grasping here. <laughs> This is a film of 10 minutes. Ah, we're moving here. So, I hope we won't stay there. Great, we're moving. He's moving too. So, uh, you have the, the grasping, you identify. You have very much to see that the grasping and identification come together. You identify, you limit yourself to what you grasp at, and then the big problem with grasping is you magnify. Let's say you have a problem at the office. Somebody said something or does something and you're really upset. That guy always does this and he's really terrible. I can't stand it. But you don't do anything about it. But you think about it. You go home, you think about it. You eat, you think about it. You go to bed, you think about it. But the guy did not ask to be in your head. You are grasping negatively at the person. It's very important to see that we grasp positively, I want. We grasp also negatively, I don't want. And there is this two side effect of grasping. Proliferation and exaggeration. We have this beautiful bouquet there. So you're all sitting here and you can see this bouquet. Ooh, nice bouquet. And you can come, be aware of the bouquet. I love this ikebana. I love this flower arrangement. <gasps> oh, if only I could have this flower in my garden. But to have this flower in my garden, I need a greenhouse. How am I going to go to have a greenhouse? Should I rob the bank? <laughs> so you're not with the beauty of the flower anymore. You are in the proliferation of the thing itself. Or oh, you see the flower arrangement. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. I am such a lousy flower arranger. I really can't do this. Why can't I do this? Although people can do it, I'm a hopeless person. I never do anything in my life. <laughs> so just from seeing, you know, contact, feeling tone with the flower arrangement, you go into this huge thing. And I think this is important to see a signal of grasping is proliferation. And another signal of grasping is exaggeration. Something, you see something. Once I had this experience, and that's why I shift to creative engagement. I was taking care of my grandmother, who was very old, because my mother had a little time off. And so in the morning, I go to see grandma. Ha, how are you, grandma? And she seemed okay, a little confused. So I go to the kitchen to prepare breakfast, and then I realize that actually grandma had a little problem with feces, and they're all over the place. And I walked in it, and I went to the kitchen with it, and back, and I see it. Ooh! And then I saw I had a choice. Either I could grasp, get upset at me, at grandma, at the universe, and it would kind of be relatively unpleasant and uncompassionate, or I could creatively engage. Oh, this has happened. What do I need to do? And I was amazed. In less than an hour, it was cleaned up. And I was at peace, and I was kind to grandma. And that's what I mean by creative engagement. Creative engagement helps us to be stable and open, and also helps us to creatively engage, because we are not going to magnify. This is a problem with grasping, is that we're going to magnify, we're going to go in abstraction, and we cannot use our creative potential in abstraction. This is what is tricky. So in a way, when we meditate, and of course you're distracted, this is fine. This is a good opportunity to see, 
How do I grasp? How do I identify? How do I distract myself? It's good information. But every time we come back to the breath, to the sound, to loving kindness, to whatever it is, we come back to this experience, the whole of the experience. Instead of grasping at something, going into the exaggeration or proliferation of it, and not being there. And often we can so frighten ourselves. But let me make a little uh, a little experiment with sounds, contact. You've got ears, and you hear sounds, but also you hear words. What do you do with words? You know, sometimes you sit in meditation, the breath, yes. <laughs> then suddenly you remember, that guy, this lady, she said this to me two years ago. How dare they? You know? And you get so upset. But words, what are words? I mean, talk of emptiness. I say a word, it's gone. It's gone. But if we grasp at it, we keep it. Shall I make a little experiment? I look at you, but I look very nicely at you. Very nicely at you. And I say, you are enlightened. Each and every single one of you right now, enlightened 150%. <gasps> I am enlightened? <laughs> she said I am enlightened? So I can go and teach Mercedes or whatever you want, you know. Ideal teacher, what they do. Oh, I look at you. A little. You are all stupid. <gasps> she said, I'm stupid. She's stupid to say, I'm stupid. Etc., etc., etc. It's just a word. We hear word a lot during this whole uh, conference. You're going to hear a lot of words. You're going to discuss with each other. What are you going to do with these words? Are you going to grasp at them? Or are you going to creatively engage with them? To me, that's one of the practice. One of the practices is meditative listening, creative listening. When I listen to something, how can I creatively engage with what I listen to? So that, to me, part of this process is from the meditation acceptance and transformation. That when I hear a word, I consider it. Is this about me or is it about them? Do I buy this or not? Do I grasp at the word or do I creatively engage with the world? And I'm going to stop here because I want you to do a little exercise. I think we see too much in conferences. That's one of my problems with conferences. That's why I generally don't come to conferences. But I came to this one because it's Buddhist kicks. <laughs> so now I would like all of you to stand up. And we're going to do a little standing meditation. First one minute. First one minute. So standing meditation. And just right here, right now, you can stretch a little if you want. In your mind, in your body, in your sensation, emotional or physical, can I creatively engage with them in this moment? Am I grasping at one? And if I'm grasping at one, am I, you know, what am I doing with it? So just being aware. How does it feel to grasp? How does it feel to be creatively engaged with this organism, with this flow of condition in this moment? Can I creatively engage with my thought? Can I creatively engage with a funny sensation? Can I creatively engage with a pleasant 
or unpleasant feeling tone. And now, I would like to, if you could turn to each other, so two people or four people or three people face each other, or five, but you know that you are with others. You are with others. So you are facing some people, and then you can shake hand, you can smile, you can look at them, whatever you want. But seeing, seeing, can you look at them? Can you look at the other person? Engaging creatively or grasping? What do you do? Do you grasp at something? Do you creatively engage with their whole human beingness? <laughs> it, it looks to me, you actually would rather talk to each other than listen to us. <laughs> So if you can sit down. And just one final thing before I leave you. You did not get the whole film. It stopped in the middle. So what we might do is actually uh, try to find a way to have the film put on somewhere. And then you can really see it as it was planned. <laughs> Thank you.